Hello everyone and welcome to this brand new tutorial where I will teach you how to make 2D reflective water in the Godot engine using shaders. To follow along this tutorial you will need to have some basic knowledge about shaders. You can check out my previous video on how to make a shockwave shader in Godot where I explain the fundamentals of shaders. At the end of the video we will have something that looks like this. And hopefully you will have the skills to modify it and tweak it as you want. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so here in Godot, I have a simple 2D scene with some background image uh, that comes from one of my unfinished games. And I add a sprite node. I rename it to water and then I give it a texture. I will just use the default Godot icon. Now under material, we define a new shader material and in here we create a new shader. So as last time, we tell Godot what kind of shader this is. So we type shader type and canvas item in semicolon. Next, we define the fragment function, so we type void, fragment, parentheses, and curly brackets. So, we want to sample the screen texture above in an area of the same size, but the local UV and the screen UV are not the same. We want to know what's the height of our sprite in screen UV coordinates. For that, we need to calculate the scaling factor that links the two. So we take the unit height of the sprite and we divide it by the unit height of the screen. Now we can use this to offset our sampling area on the y-axis, so we sample what's above the sprite. But as you can see, it's not flipped. To fix that, we multiply the offset by the UVY coordinate multiplied by 2. In Ghetto, we have two handy built-ins that we can use to get the absolute UV screen UV ratio. Those are texture pixel size and screen pixel size. They are respectively the multiplicative inverse of the resolution of the texture and of the resolution of the screen. So to get our scaling factor or the ratio on the y-axis, we need to divide the screen pixel size y by the texture pixel size y. And now you may ask, wasn't it texture height over screen height? Well, yes, but actually no, because here we are working with multiplicative inverses. So to get to our scaling ratio, we again need to do the multiplicative inverse. So it will be screen pixel size over texture pixel size on the y-axis, of course. So back in the fragment function, we declare a new float that we call UV height and we set it to screen pixel size dot y divided by texture pixel size dot y. Next, we create a new vec2 that we call reflected screen UV and we set it to vec2 screen UV dot x colon screen UV dot y and we add UV height times uv dot y times 2. Okay, so let's see if it's working. So we set the color to the texture function where we sample the screen texture and we pass our reflected screen uv. And as you can see, it's working as it should. Now let's say we want to cover a bigger area. So let's grab this handle and scale the sprite. As you can see, it starts displaying no sense, I guess. So that's because um, our shader isn't aware of the scale of the sprite. So we need to fix that. In the shader, we create a new uniform that will be a vec2 and we call it scale. Next, we attach a script to our water sprite and we set it as a tool script 
so the script will be executed even in the editor. Next we connect the item rec change signal to the script. So this will be executed when the rectangle of the object will be changed. So for example, when we scale it. When that happens, we want to pass our current scale to the shader. So we type material dot set shader param and we give it scale as a string. So that's the name of the property and we pass it scale. So that's the current value of the sprite scale. Now to get the tool script working, we need to reload the scene. So I just close it and reopen it in the shader on the reflected screen UV line. We want to multiply the uv.y by the scale.y. And as you can see, now when we scale the sprite, the reflection is displayed correctly. You may have noticed that I keep the zoom level at 100%. That is because when I zoom in or zoom out, the reflection gets stretched in a wrong way. To fix that, we will take the same approach as we had for the scale. So in the shader, we declare a new uniform that is a float and let's call it Y zoom. And again, we multiply the UV.Y by the Y zoom. Well, we can put it here, for example, it's all multiplication, so we don't really care about the order. In the script, uh, we create a new function that we call zoom changed. And this time we will pass the Y zoom factor to the shader. So again, now let's copy that uh, material set shader parameter. So Y zoom and we pass it get viewport global canvas transform dot y dot y. We can execute this function in the process, for example. So it will run uh, every frame. And once I save, you can see that it displays the reflection correctly at any zoom level. So I'm executing it here in the process function. So it's updated in the editor on every frame, but that's not the best way to do it. So in game, uh, you should probably call this um, zoom changed uh, when you know that you are changing your zoom. I don't know if you have some kind of cinematic and you are zooming in with a tween node, um, consider calling this too. So it's synced up. So you don't need to update it um, on every frame, that's kind of useless. In the fragment function, we will replace the color by a new variable. So it will be a vec4 and let's call it reflection. And here at the top, we declare a new uniform, which is a vec4 and let's call it water color. And we give the editor the hint that it's a color. And as you can see, now in the inspector, I have this color picker. So on a new line at the bottom, we set the color RGB channels to the mix of the reflection RGB channels with the water color RGB channels according to the watercolor alpha. We will basically use the alpha of the watercolor as our interpolation value. And now, as you can see, when I change the color in the inspector, it changes the look on screen. And as I told you, the alpha is modulating the intensity. So how is it mixed? To create a distortion, we will need some kind of noise. So let's create a new uniform that will be a sampler 2D and let's call it noise. So as you can see now, it pops up here in the inspector, so we can give it a new noise texture. Uh, we define it as seamless 
and in its noise we create a new open simplex noise that we can tweak later. So in the fragment function let's create a new float that we call distortion and we set it to texture of the noise and we sample it according to the UV times the scale and we take only the X component of it because only one value interests us between 0 and 1. Here on the reflected screen UV line we subtract the screen UV X by the distortion and right now the distortion is very small but very strong so let's fix that so we can tweak it. Let's create two new uniforms. The first will be a VEC2, which we call Distortion Scale. And the other uniform is a float that we call Intensity. So now here we can multiply by the Distortion Scale. And currently it's at zero, so we change it in the inspector. And as you can see, it scales the distortion accordingly. We can also multiply the whole thing by the intensity and this way we can control the intensity of the distortion. But as you can see, uh, now the whole thing gets offset to the right or to the left depending on the sign of the intensity. So let's remove the intensity here and on a new line we subtract uh, the distortion by 0 0.5. We have basically centered the values around 0, so now it goes between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Once the distortion is offset, we can go to the reflected screen UV line, and here we can multiply the final distortion by the intensity. Currently it's still not looking good, so I will play a bit with the um, distortion scale until I get something that I like. We want the distortion to move over time, so here, when we are sampling the texture, we add the time to the UV. But as you can see, now it's too fast, so let's create a new uniform, which will be a float, and let's call it speed, and now we can multiply the time by the speed, and we can tweak it until we have something that we like. We can also go into the noise texture and into the open simplex noise component and here change the parameters. Here I am changing the period until I have something I like. One last thing, as you can see the distortion intensity is still and is not relative to the actual zoom so uh, what we can do to fix this is to go here on this line and multiply the intensity by our Y zoom variable. And now as you can see it's fixed, we can zoom out, zoom in and the distortion intensity stays the same. Last but not least is adding some waves to the surface. So let's create three new uniforms that will be each float The first is wave amplitude. The second one is wave speed. And the last is wave period. Next in the fragment function we declare a new float that we call waves and we set it to the uv.y times scale.y as always and we add to it the sinus of the uv.x time scale.x divided by the wave period and we add some moving offset so here it will be the time times um, the wave speed and we multiply the whole sign by the amplitude Okay, let's display how this value looks. So here at the end we set color.rgb to uh, vec3 and we pass the waves float in it. And as you can see we have this wavy shape and we can control the parameters from the inspector. 
As you can see, when I change the amplitude, um, the wave gets eventually cut off at the top. To prevent that, we go back on this line and at the end we subtract the wave amplitude. So now when I change the wave amplitude in the inspector, as you can see, it changes uh, relative to the top border. Right now the wave mask doesn't have a proper edge, so let's use the step function to fix that. Okay, uh, let's set the edge value to 0 0.1. And here we go, we have a defined border. We can change this value and it will offset the waves to the bottom. The border looks very harsh right now, so we will use the smooth step function instead of the step function. I will set it to 0 0.1 and 0 0.13. So as you can see, the top of the wave will be a bit offset from the top and the transition between black and white is very subtle but smooth. The waves look kind of boring right now. So let's go back to the waves line and multiply the sinus by something else. So we multiply the sinus by a cosine and in it we type 0 0.2 times uv.x times scale.x divided by the wave period again. And we add again the time multiplicated by the wave speed. Okay, so the overlapping waves go in the same direction right now. So I will change here the plus to a minus. So it goes in the opposite directions. And I prefer it like this. So now it's the right moment to tweak the waves. So just play around with the parameters until you get something you like. Now let's apply this wave mask to what we had previously displayed. We want to affect the alpha channel, so instead of RGB we write A and we remove the VIC3 as we are only passing one value. And ta-da, we have applied the waves. So we are pretty much done. Now it's up to you to tweak it as you want. You can add a little white border at the top and basically that's the same approach as the alpha. So Try to do this by yourself. I'm sure you can do it. And you can also change the wave function. So I will link a Desmos graph where I made um, a pseudo trochoidal wave. So if you prefer that, you may also use it. But use your imagination and just experiment around in Desmos or in the shader editor. And I'm sure you will be able to get something. Anyways, thanks for watching, I hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you want to see more things like this, consider subscribing and following me on Twitter. Until then, see you next time.